So a couple weeks ago, upon unlocking the Nuka launcher from the Nuka World on Tour scoreboard, this thing is absolutely insane, by the way. I started crafting grenades, and I quickly realized that I need oil, and lots of it. I could just head over to Blackwater Mine and start grabbing blowtorches and gas cans and hopefully get enough of it, but I'm lazy, and I stopped at like three of them. So I got to thinking, there has to be a better way to go about this. Work smarter, not harder. And then it dawned on me, the cutting fluid plan. This magnificent yet elusive masterpiece has to be one of the hardest yet easiest plans to get in the game. Since the plan only has a 20% chance to drop, this can make obtaining it very difficult. Some people can get it on their first try, but for people like me, it may take 16 tries. So today we're gonna go over how to get the cutting fluid plan, but also a method on how to speed up your farming process. You may just need it, trust me. If this video changes your oil game, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more Fallout 76 content. Let's jump into it. The cutting fluid plan can be crafted in your chemistry bench all the way at the bottom in utility. Now, how we make some cutting fluid is with two acid, eight bone, two purified water, and three steel, which may seem like a lot, but it's really not so bad because one cutting fluid breaks down into three oil. And then you have a chance to double it with the super duper card. So up to six oil for one cutting fluid. That's freaking awesome. There are other ways to get oil, like taking over workshops or going around and picking it up yourself. But in my opinion, that just takes way too long. This is the way. First thing you want to do is go ahead and start you a new character. You can't do this on your main character because that opportunity's probably already came and gone. If you don't do this within the first few missions, you've missed your chance. Upon exiting the vault, head straight for the wayward. It is just southeast, and once you know where it is, you don't need to worry about the first few NPCs. Once you get close enough, the wayward souls quest will pop up on the top right. Once you're inside, show Mr. Batter what time it is by blowing his head off. Nobody holds up the Duchess. Nobody. After saving our girl Duchess from the would-be robber, she proceeds to tell you that there is this gang that keeps harassing her. And just like the good Samaritan that you are, you agree to help her out. So the plan is to act like this guy Crane, which will attract all these thugs in hopes that these other thugs will show us where the original thugs hideouts are. Yeah, it sounds complicated. After talking to the Duchess and leaving the wayward, immediately head outside and place your camp. Now the Duchess wants us to place this sign to attract these thugs, so open your pit boy and learn the plan that she gave you. Crane's treasure hunting sign. Once you've placed that, start heading toward the relay tower, EMB-127 or whatever it's called. Once you arrive, there's going to be a couple Scorch taking pop shots at you. Just take them out and then start making your way toward the terminal. Once you have the terminal pulled up, hit X to load the broadcast tape or whatever the corresponding button is, and then head back to your camp because you have a few people you have to meet. Once you get there, just hang out for a little bit. It might take you a few seconds. It might even take 30 seconds for the first person to show up. The first guy really doesn't matter. Really, I got to the point where I was just shooting him in the face as soon as he arrived because it, it, his questioning doesn't affect anything. So feel free to lay them out as soon as you see them. The second group that comes by is a little more aggressive and really it doesn't matter if you kill these people or not, you're still gonna find out where the thug's hideout is. If you wanna take the less violent path and just flex on them, you can use your strength special to do so. You should be putting your points in strength or charisma and you'll see why in a little bit. After receiving the location of the hideout by either force or by dialogue, start making your way back toward the wayward. Once inside and you report what happened to the Dutch her and Mort will start talking amongst themselves how exactly they want to move forward. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. Most players fly right through this quest without even knowing what they're about to miss. After exhausting all of Mort's dialogue, and make sure you do so, he'll tell you that you have to go to Anchor Farm to question a family, and you'll want to head there first. So, Anchor Farm is right between Vault 76 and Tyler County Fairgrounds. This might seem like a lot of running around, but it's well worth it. And there's a way to speed this up that we're going to go over in a little bit. Once you do arrive, make your way upstairs, and you're going to find our good friend Mr. Daniel. When you start talking to him and ask him if he has any knowledge of this gang at the West Virginia Lumber, he'll deny any involvement or any knowledge whatsoever. Now, this is where you have to use your special points to try to get a straight answer out of this guy. In order to satisfy the requirements to proceed, you gotta make sure you have at least three points in strength, charisma, or perception. You should have leveled up at least twice by now. So when you level up, make sure you put your points in strength by buying the strength cards, and you won't have nothing to worry about when it comes to the dialogue choices. And again, you might be doing this more than once, so it doesn't really matter where your points go, other than just getting you through this as fast as possible. After selecting one of the special dialogue options, make sure you select that you're going to kill those guys and you can start giving me the supplies instead. After this, you can start heading for the gang's hideout. They are located just north at West Virginia Lumber Company. This is a little more of a trip, but again, so worth it. Once you arrive, you might be tempted to try to jump through this little hole. No matter how hard you try, you will not fit through. So instead, just follow the fence around to their front gate. Once you get to the front, hit the little red button 
or talk to the speaker. If you want to make it faster, just hit the red button and the doors will open immediately, but they become aggressive. The other option is to use the speaker and tell them a secret password, and then you can make your way toward the building without any interference. Although these are really low levels, so you could kill them regardless, and it doesn't affect anything, so have fun if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Make your way up the ramp and head into their office. This is where the boss resides. Everyone may or may not be aggressive depending on your earlier actions, but start making your way downstairs. It's about two or three flights, and once you make it all the way through this cave, you'll find Roper. This is the gang leader that everyone has been tripping on. You can talk to him, or like the other methods in this video, the faster route is simply blowing his head off. This will piss everyone off, so you have to kill them and start making your way back upstairs. Once you do get back up top, this is where you have to spray paint Leave the Wayward Alone on the wall. Like the trail of bodies you just left behind wasn't big enough of a message. We had to go ahead and write Leave the Wayward Alone in their own blood, but that's okay. We're just gonna have to live with that. In order to fast travel, you're gonna have to finish everybody off, so after doing so, fast travel back to Anchor Farm. Make sure you don't go to the Duchess and turn this in. You have to go back and talk to Daniel. Upon doing so, he'll congratulate you on taking out the leader of the gang, and then he'll give you his cash of goods. This has a chance to include purified waters, recipes, gourds, all kind of stuff, but most importantly, the cutting fluid plan. And there's only a 20% chance that you're gonna get that, so it's very hard to get. And again, it took me like 16 tries, but I didn't say how long each try took. There's a much faster way to go about getting this plan, because there's a very large chance you're gonna be killing Roper over and over and over again. At one point, I had to bust out the knife and get to stabbing. Yeah, things got real personal. You don't hurt my girl, Duchess. Nobody, baby. Come on. So running this all alone can be a pain in the ass. I mean, it is terribly slow. Running to each spot can take 5, 10, 15 minutes or more. And the whole run can take over an hour if you're by yourself. So the way I make this a lot faster, and you've probably already guessed it, is finding a buddy that also needs the cutting fluid plan. So check this out. The first thing you do is make your character. Make your way through the vault and make your way outside. While this is happening, have a friend join your server and then make a charisma team. The points from the team also work for your dialogue choices. But most importantly, being in a team allows you to fast travel to these locations without knowing them previously, which saves a ridiculous amount of time. By the time you're done one section, your teammate should be at the next area ready for you to teleport. As you can see here, I have Rio waiting for me, and as soon as I get here, he disappears. At this point, he goes to Anchor Farm because he knows I've already discovered the wayward in this tower. After loading the broadcast tape, head back to your camp and meet the radical. Kill him and then report to Duchess, and that's when Mort sends you to Anchor Farm, where your oh-so-vigilant teammate is waiting for you. And then as soon as you get here, your teammate would go to the lumber mill. So as you can see, this makes it so much faster. This turns our runs into about five to 10 minutes if you're fast enough and you have a dedicated team. Luckily, I had a teammate that wanted the cutting fluid plan as bad as I did. So we made an effort to not stop until we got two of them, which took about five hours. I'm not gonna lie, it did take a little bit of time, but we made it happen. Gathering the materials to make the cutting fluid is not so bad either. Again, it takes acid, bone, purified water, and steel. Acid you can get from a few different places. For one, you can take over hemlock holes. There, you can put down three acid extractors, which gather acid at a pretty fast rate. Although, there's a much faster way, and that's gotta be fighting Earl and all his minions at the Colossal Problem event. The Wendigos there drop massive amounts of ammo, purified water, but most importantly, they drop their teeth, which you can break down into acid. The amount of Wendigos that spawn is absolutely ridiculous. It is one after the other. Check this out. From one event, we ended up with 436 fiber glass, over 500 loose screws, but most importantly, 91 Wendigo teeth. They break down to 182 acid. You're not going to find that anywhere else. Not in 30 minutes anyway. Now, the best way to get steel and bone is a similar route. Instead of launching a nuke at Monaga Mine, you launch a nuke at the Mine Shaft 2 to get seismic activity to pop. I used to swear by scorched earth, and trust me, I still do because that still gets you plenty of steel. All the different scorched and different enemies that it spawns, but seismic activity spawns tons of mole miners. Mole miners have mole miner gauntlets and tons of other different weapons that drop you massive amounts of steel, up to 20 per weapon. The reason the mole miner gauntlets are so significant is they drop two mole rat teeth per gauntlet. I had over a thousand pounds of weight and weapons from this event, and this is being played at 500%, just to give you an idea of how much you can actually get from this event. As long as you're in a team of four and you have an explosive weapon and you're getting hits on everything, you're gonna get a lot of drops. But look at the amount of loot I got from this thing, 124 mole rat 
rat teeth, over 2,000 steel. This is incredible. If you know of a good way to get acid steel or bone, please drop it below. But for real, I think these are the best ways by far. When it comes to making the cutting fluid, the only thing that seems to hold me back is trying to find enough purified water. If you can get your hands on the vintage water cooler, that thing is godly. You can only get it from other players or from presents, I believe, but use what you got. You don't have to go all fancy with the vintage water cooler. If you only have the stock water cooler, then so be it. Another method that I found helpful was taking over workshops and then making water cooler blueprints and placing like two or three of them. Each blueprint has like 20 or 30 coolers. Although this might be kind of tough in a public server because you might get attacked, it's a risk you might have to take. Keep in mind that water purifiers only spawn one at a time, no matter how many you have. So having more only creates more capacity. So it's still going to take a little while to make, but it's well worth it. Getting the cutting fluid plan had to be one of the most interesting and frustrating experiences I've ever went through in Fallout 76. Having a solid teammate that wants the cutting fluid plan as bad as you do really helps too. Shout out my boy Rio. If you found this video helpful, guys, do me a solid and hit that like button. If you want to see the top five weapons now that legacies are patched, click right here. And make sure you subscribe if you want to see more Fallout 76 content. Thanks for watching, everybody. Love y'all. Peace.